Whew. Okay, we're back with uh, the Hildebrand storyline. Um, when we last left off, we had, well, totally destroyed the uh, the vegetables which we needed to uh, freaking uh, for the feast. Uh, when is this rain gonna stop? Where is that? Where's that? Uh, Sky Watcher. There it is. What's the weather supposed to be like in Costa del Sol in a bit? It's Eastern La Nocha, right? Yeah. So, yeah, Eastern La Nocha, it's currently showery. Forecast calls for extended fair skies. And that should be at hopefully midnight. But anyway, let's talk to Sundamal in order to get through this. If you've come for the Mandragoras, I fear you've half a bell too late. As were we, as were we, blast it all. To hear the poor merchant tell it, no sooner had he opened his cargo hold to check on a shipment of vegetables, than did an onion turn on him, screeching bloody murder. Fled his own vessel in sheer terror, he did. By the time he came to his senses, it had set sail without him. The merchant left for airport, hoping to recoup his losses. If you've a mind to go after the culprits, you might lend an ear to his sad tale. Ah, is the thrill of chase not invigorating, friend? The ferry docked by Fisherman's Bottom will carry us to Aleport. Let us swiftly be on our way. Fisherman's Bottom. Oh, yeah. Now I remember it. Oh, yeah, this isn't... In retrospect, we could just teleport to Aleport, but I feel like getting uh, one of the uh, Aetherites on the way. So, we're gonna just... Before we uh, go, make sure to grab this. And now we have Ethernet access to the Fisherman's Guild. Off to Aleport. Alright, off to Western Lanoche. Noche. Nose to the nose. Ah! Don't sneak up on me like that. I thought you were a fat of turnip, a murderous eggplant, or summit like that. Think I just do? You'd be singing a different tune when if a tomato, if a shot of tomato juice almost took out your eye, as it did mine. My eye. By the time I had to gain my wits, they'd already set sail with me shipping me livelihood. I'm ruined. Ruined! If I ever see another bleeding onion to the enemy days, it'll be too soon! Oh boy. To hear most say it, the Mandragoras are a nasty lot. A right pen in the arse to farmers and provisioners the realm over. But let me tell you, friend. That ain't the least of it. Freeing the fellow fronds from a lot of his and tables is but the beginning. The bulbous blackguards have a far grander scheme. Revolution. Madness, ye say? Take a ferry to the Isles of Umbra and see with your own eyes. A veritable vegetable kingdom where eggplants and turnips rule with an iron fist. Hmm? This muscle-bound fellow with the dim expression... I could swear I've seen this face somewhere before. Bugger me. If it ain't the undead overlord, Odward fancies himself a gentleman inspector. Which would make you 
I could be the adventurer what bested the thieving duelist in single combat? Yeah, that was me. Not proud of it. Well, bugger me and call me Inspector. Tell me, is it true the duelist traveled with a demon bird whose crow could split the heavens? Yeah, but that's neither here nor there. Look, I don't know about you, but I ain't so keen on the notion of calling in a bloody tomato, your grace. And that's exactly the fate we're in for if we don't nip this revolution in the bud. And I mean that had literally. As we speak, the Mandragoras are planning themselves a whole army of their own kind in the eyes of Umbra. You'd be doing the whole realm a favor if you could go there and uproot them before the harvest comes. Many a case have I solved in my day, but I've not met which with sentient plant life before. This should prove quite exhilarating to the Isles of Umbra. This, sh this can't end well. I don't know what I don't know what that text was but uh hell I'm not freaking gonna bother with it I'll just make random noises Might as well take out a praying mantis or two. Ha, <laughs> suck it, bitch. Oh, five of these things? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> what the fuck? Who <laughs> If a suit of the Mandragoras will run with the need to serpent, yes, it must be done here. Uh, somewhere. I should probably summon Tenchi into the fray. Why are you running to, you little bitch?
I need to level sync freaking uh level 50. It's open! What? Why? I'm in the middle of something and then I'm leaving. What? There. All right, let's head back to Costa del Sol. This better only take a minute.
All right, let's finish this damn quest line so I can go. I mean, really, people. It's like freaking pulling at teeth to get people to leave me alone in the middle of a goddamn live stream. But does anybody listen to me when I'm saying I'm in the middle of something? No, of course not, because everybody's got to have something or some... Some problem that I need to solve. People are so fucking technologically inept. You return. I feel you might let up a sassy snack for a crazed head of cabbage. All right, let's do it. The stolen foodstuffs. You saved my hide today. Oh, but I must see if those purple dragon peppers are intact. Master Guguremu is quite particular about his seasonings. Oh, can I come too? I've never seen a purple dragon pepper before. That wild vegetable chase was a pleasant diversion. But it is time we return to the case. Now, there must be some clue that yet eludes us. Caw! The peppers have changed color! What's this? Peppers that possess the same powers of disguise as our many faced foe. A gentleman must needs investigate. A striking shade of blue, quite far from the purple that Master Lewinhardt described. Perhaps we recovered the wrong crate? But look here, Inspector. The crate was clearly marked for Costa del Sol. How curious. D did I say purple? I meant a purplish blue, or a bluish purple? The two colors are really quite similar when you think about it. These peppers have a most distinctive hue. No man could reasonably mistake it for any shade of purple. Unless, of course, he was wearing a very particular sort of eyewear at the time. Ha! The charade is up! After the man! It, it is as I suspected all along. The goggles have proved the key to tri her cracking the case. With speed, Nashu, the fiend must be brought to justice. <sighs> Why me? Why fucking me? You can run, but you cannot... <sighs> if you thought you could not sprint this mandible man, you are sorely mistaken. For pilfering a priceless blade, threatening a maiden's virtue, and untold crimes against the law-abiding citizens of Veolia, I... Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, hereby place you under arrest! Hmm. Done in by a snipper, a fitting end for an ignoble thief. Let's see what lies behind the mask. Playing the fool will avail you not. I suggest you come willingly. A gentleman is not given the violence, but should you attempt to resist, I disavow, I disavow responsibility for any shattered skulls and broken bones. 
Uh -uh. W wait, I remember now. I was on my way to meet with Miss Arabella when... Miss Arabella! I must find her at once! Ugh, my head! Hmm. It would seem that this man wears no mask. This is the true Lewinhart. I swear on my life that it is so. I was en route to the estate when in Wineport when one of the black brass blades on the patrol ambushed me. We exchanged greetings, and in the next instant he turned on me. I fought desperately to defend myself, even managing to drive a kitchen when I fit into the man's right hand. In the end, though, he proved too strong for me. Now that you mention it, the imposter was wearing gloves. I knew there was something suspicious about him. There is still time before the banquet begins. Knowing our quarry, he has or doubtless already assumed a new identity. And yet, he could not have foreseen this turn of events. It is unlikely that he had the time to thoroughly research his new target. Most importantly, we now know that the thief suffered, suffered a wound to his right hand. We need simply return to Costa del Sol and examine the hands of all present. An excellent plan, Inspector. While you do so, we shall accompany Lewinhard back to the estate, that we might ensure Miss Arabella's safety. I have found you, little ones. Let me guess. You seethe with anger at those who took from you what was yours. Then it would appear that our goals are in accord. Make for Costa del Sol and await my orders. When the time is right, revenge will be yours. The game is in foot, inspectors. <sighs> this won't end well. Now, what mask shall I wear to the ball? I swear to God, I should just try a Jack and a God voice. So, we finally get to lay eyes on Lady Arabella. Miss Arabella, what are you doing out here? You must return to the estate at once. Oh, Lewin, always the warrior. Your concern is touching, but I am a woman grown. Besides, I just wanted to see the flowers. Lovely though these flowers may be, they are unsightly we there are unsightly weeds when measured against your beauty. I am Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, expector extraordinaire. Please call me Hildy. The pleasure is mine, my lord. I have heard much have I heard of your deeds. Tell me, are these rumors of a many faced thief true? I fear they are, Miss Arabella. But still your gentle heart, for as long as Hildebrand is on the case, the fiend shall not weigh a twisted finger upon you. 
Not this, I swear, on the Mandeville name. God smile on me indeed, to send such a strong and handsome gentleman as my champion. And yet, <sighs> you seem pensive, my lady. Is something the matter? To tell the truth, this marriage has been arranged against my wishes. I do not love Vane's. Why, I have not even met him. He sent me this clasp as a betrothal gift, a treasure for my treasure, where it always, the message said. I do not care how beautiful it is. It might as well be a golden shackle. Miss Arabella, you must not say such things. An arranged marriage to a youth you have not even met. Unconscionable. Father says that this marriage must happen, that it is for the future of the family trade. Spoken like a true old Don, but if I may be bold, my lady, would I be correct in assuming that you and your father are not related by blood? Quite so. Father found me amongst the beggars on Pearl Lane when I was just a babe. He took me in and raised me as his own. He took Lewin in as well, though as servant rather than son. You may think father a cold and miserly man, but to me he is the man who gave me warmth and hope where I had none. I will learn to love Vane's, if that will make father happy. You cannot be serious, Miss Arabella. You are a beautiful young woman with your life, whole life ahead of you. Surely you would not have to look far to find a gentleman with whom you'd rather spend the rest of your days. If I have to spend another hour with you, I'm like to lose my wits. But anyway, we should return to Costa del Sol and see how the inspector's investigation fares. I as well must prepare for the banquet. Farewell, friends. Why do I have the feeling this is not going to end well? We've not a moment to lose, friend. The time of our final confrontation with the Fiend is nigh. Our foe has doubtless assumed a new identity, but have no fear. Upon our return to Costa del Sol, I shall employ the time-tested mandible art of Polly to cut through the Fiend's flimsy facade. Tis an art I would impart to you as well, friend. Though there will be time enough for that once our foe is in shackles and Miss Arabella is safe. No doubt it shall prove invaluable as your adventures has as it has in my investigations. Or failing that, serve to entertain you when you have nothing better to do. But I digress. A gentleman must away to cost it a soul. The fair maiden's life hangs in the balance. Nashu! Miss Ellie! With me! This is gonna suck. This is gonna suck. All right, let's do this. Inspector Briardian, I have seen the maiden to the maiden safety. Miss Arabella will be along soon. How fares your investigation? I've canvassed the grounds, but none of the guests are concealing their hands. How can this be? The thief must be somewhere. Miss Arabella just left her estate, I hear. I suppose we'll find out soon enough if her beauty is truly a match for our own. <laughs> there is no time. Without the thief in custody, we cannot risk allowing Miss Arabella to take the stage. But, but, it's, but, but, Inspector, Vane's and his family will not take kindly to his patrol's actions. Hmm, <laughs> that is nothing of my concern. Doubtless, besides, doubtless the Inspector here will think of something. M me What do you propose? You're the expert at creating diversions. Can't you just knock something over, blow something up or the like? You know, like you always do? Inspector Briardian, I knew the day would come that you recognize my many talents. Worry not about Master Vane's. Yes, for the sake of the maiden, a gentleman will do what must needs be done. The poor sop lacks even the wits to know when he's being insulted. Now to the task at hand. We must find a way to conceal Miss Arabella's true identity. Not far from here are the servants' quarters. There should be a change of clothes lying about. Perfect. Vion, find some suitably ordinary garb and deliver it to Miss Arabella outside the gates. I shall proceed with the investigation.
Has the lapis management arrived yet? I simply must look upon our beauty for myself. Seven's garb, you say? I much prefer what you're wearing, but we certainly have enough rags to go around. Here you go. Do with them as you will. Greetings, friend. Oh, what's this you have for me? Servant scarb? But why? Miss Arabella, with the thief still at large, the risk of letting you be seen is too great. Change into these clothes and promise that you will not leave my sight. But, but the ceremony! Father will be furious! And Lord Vane's... We are dealing with a man who tried to blast me to the heavens and almost succeeded. We cannot exercise enough caution. As for the ceremony, I have entrusted the matter to a certain gentleman. You need only concern yourself with your own safety. We should do as the inspector says, Miss Alibert. Your life is more important than this marriage, or whatever profit your father stands to gain from it. Lewin, if father said you say such things... I should have said them long ago. By not doing so, I have put your life in danger. But besides, we have not one, but two skilled inspectors on the case. It will not be long before the fiend is brought to justice. Very well. I shall retreat to the carriage. Pray, wait for me here. My apologies for the delay, but what should I do with my banquet dress, Inspector? Bayon, bring Miss Arabella's dress to that bumbling Inspector. I dare not speculate as to how he intends to see to this task, but I would imagine he requires all the help he can get. Now, let us return before the festivities begin. This will not end well. This is not bow well. Hmm. Ah, you return. Me? I was in the act of formulating a master plan to distract Master Veins at the ceremony. Is there all I may do for you? Why, this is Miss Arabella's dress. I must admit to some confusion as to what to do with it. But worry not, I shall take it into safekeeping. Now with that, I must attend the Master Veins before the ceremony begins. Worry not, friend. I assure you that Inspector Briardian and I have this situation entirely under control. Why not find yourself a scene and enjoy the festivities? This does not bode well. Curses. How am I supposed to find my man with all these people milling about? Friends, family, business associates, tis an honor and a pleasure to welcome one and all to Costa del Sol for today's feast, co-hosted by the Brugere Consortium and the East Aldenar Trading Company. We trust you've been enjoying the food, fine spirits, and profitable conversation. The Lapis Maiden. Even if half the tales of her beauty are true, Vane's is the luckiest bastard in the realm. Yalto, Yalto Noto, Sainana, honored guest. It is a great pleasure to announce the betrothal of my son Vane's, future chair of the Brugere Consortium, to Arabella, daughter of Master Guguremu of the East Aldenar Trading Company. 
The couple would exchange their eternal vows here today, that the happiness that is theirs may usher in a new era of prosperity for one and all. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present my son's lovely bride, the Lapis Maiden, whose beauty minstrels will sing for ages to come. Damn you, Hildebrand Mandeville! You had one job! She's... she's beautiful! Oh my god... Hmm... Was the rabble expecting otherwise? She is my bride, after all. Wait for it! <laughs> Milady, they say your beauty transcends even the boundaries of time. When we are wed, you will want for nothing. Pray, give your hand unto me. <laughs> my suns and stars! Yes! Yes! A thousand times yes! I am yours, and shall be forevermore! <laughs> <laughs> what have you done with my bride, you cross-dressing deviant? <gasps> oh, oh, not quite what I intended, but I suppose it serves our purposes. Fear not, ladies and gentlemen, for Miss Arapella is safe and sound. I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, have but assumed the maiden's appearance to ensnare the vile fiend who would take aim at her life. The fiend who now lies defensively be before me. The game is up, Baines! Or should I call you by another name? The Thief of Many Faces! God. M me? The Thief? Are you mad? It appears my masterful deductions have proved beyond the grasp of your mind. Very low. Allow me to elucidate. While there is not a soul in the realm who has not heard of the tales of Miss Arabella's beauty, there are but two men here in Costa del Sol who had gazed upon her lovely visage before today. Her father, Guggenemu, and her steward, Lewinhart. As you yourself admitted on multiple occasions, Master Baines, you were her to have heard your first glimpse of your bride to be today. Considered heard in this light, would you not say your reaction upon seeing my face was most unnatural? Who else could see through my ingenious disguise? Who can know that at, at a glance that I was not the fair maiden? None save you, ye of a thousand faces! Uh. And anyone else with half their wits about them? Mm. How dare you make a mockery of my wedding day! Gods! Arrest that pervert at once! Lock him up in gall and throw away the key! Arabella? Oh, thank the gods you're safe! Come on, we quickly! There's a dangerous madman about! A glove on his right hand. Could it be? <laughs> the man is a fool, but it would have behooved you to listen to him. Alas, you did not, and what's yours is now mine. Th that 
a thief! Stop wasting your time with that imbecile and arrest him! <laughs> the fuck? You came all this way? For me? You love me! You really, really love me! That was just sickening. Oh. Oh. I thought I was gonna barf on the carpet. <laughs> the attention is most flattering, but I've taken what I came for, and now I must away. My lords, my ladies, till we meet again. Well, at least we got out to hear voice a little bit. <sighs> I hear that the real veins was found bound and gagged in the storm room. Truly, Miss Arabella, I am sorry. For what, me lady? The banquet was more exciting than I ever could have hoped for. Vane and his father's other were furious, of course, and our marriage has been called off. But perhaps it is for the best. I would find my own way to make father happy by living my life as I would live it. It is you, Inspector Hildebrand, who taught me this lesson. <clears throat> for the love of God, somebody find him a change of clothes. But one thing still puzzles me. The thief's challenge said he would steal the Lapis Maiden's virtue. Yet in the end, he only took her necklace. Now that you mention it, Master Guguremi told me about the clasp when it first arrived, engraved with the mark of the Sun Goddess. It is one of the most treasured pieces from the Bouget collection, known by many as Azema's virtue. The maiden's virtue indeed. When the next challenge comes, we must take extra care to read between the lines. They're waiting for the card to show up. Here it comes. Past me. Past Briardian. Past Hildebrand. And who does it stick in the head? Ooh! The Pumpkin Prince. Ouch. That's gotta hurt. Over here, Inspector. It says, uh, made you look. Huh? In the back of the skull. <laughs> the fiend plays us for fools. Give a, give that to me at once. When next we meet, I shall come to claim the victor's spoils. Hmm. <laughs> Another riddle. If nothing else, it appears the thief has abandoned any foolish notions of my assassination. Still, we must ever be on our on guard. The fiend attempted murder at her once. He may very well do so again. But verily, Inspector, I must agree. One can never be too wary when dealing with a murderer. Hear me, man of a thousand faces! 
You sealed your fate when you called me out by name. Mark my words. When next we meet, you will be mine. Yes, it was the Phantom Thief who was to blame for that bomb. Truly, verily, indubitably the Phantom Thief. Most certainly. Yeah. That bullshit, it really does fly in the face of familiarity. Anyways, the Parley minigame is now available. You've unlocked the Parley minigame. Entertain yourself as many a Mandeville man has before you by opening the toy chest in any in-room. Anyways, next cutscene. Gentlemen, Hero Hildebrand. To the victor goes a priceless treasure. With the smile of a champion, hold secrets untold. Are eight legs better than two? Can a Manaville man triumph over terrors and win the day? the next case is also the key to the storeroom. Be sure not to lose it. Wait. It's a real key. It's a real key and a figurative one? At the same time? Is that even possible? I guess we'll find out next time. Oh, thank the 12 this freaking bullshit is over for until the next patch. Anyways, that's it for me. I'm going to go out to eat because I've been uh, starving. Um, but anyway, when we return, we're either going to do maybe another part of patch 2.3, or we may just progress to the next patch. Uh, I'll figure, I'll fall asleep on that bridge when we stumble across it. Anyways, that's it for me. Krozik X.